following the path that Christ himself has given us. And we're not, you know, still living in the old life. I know I shouldn't have done that. I'm doing that. I know I should do this, but I'm not doing it. That doesn't bring blessing. And that doesn't bring stability and steadfastness in the kingdom of God. You come in. When you are outside the kingdom, that's the way you used to live. Now you come in into the kingdom and you live the new life. And you live the life of a child of God. Because it says, if we suffer with him, what does that mean? When you come to Christ, there may be those who do not understand this new way and this new life. And this new faith, and this new way is beyond just going to church and going to church. This new way is beyond observing Easter and harvest and uh, Christmas. This new way is beyond the superficial life of the religious. But this new way is the way that makes us to live in newness of life. And your old friends will not understand. And therefore they will persecute. They'll try to shake everything shakeable in your life. And then you say that the suffering is talking about, if they jeer at you, if they gossip about you, if they even spit in your face, if they even say things and do things or try to jolt you and to make you feel offended and feel unhappy and to make you feel, what am I doing, what I'm doing? But if you suffer the persecution, if you abide in the Lord, whatever anybody says, the mother a father, a friend, a brother, a relation, whatever they do, if we suffer that persecution, we shall also reign with him. You will reign in Jesus' name. Self, so I shouted, I said, you will reign in Jesus' name. If you have your Bible there, look at the second part and understand heaven and earth may pass away, but the word of God will not pass away. It says, if we deny him, if we deny him, you come to know the Lord as your personal savior. You believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, that he is your savior. And now somebody confronts you, uh-uh. We've not seen you in the gang, in the meeting at night anymore. What happened? Have you gone to those, uh, you know, crusades? Have you given your life to Christ? Are you saying now you are born again? Are you saying you are a child of God? If you deny him. In the family, extended family, they want to worship their idol. They're looking for, where is he? Where is she? And they're looking for your contribution. Have you paid your money? Have you not paid? Why? If you deny him, if you, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm coming back. And then you go and take money, God's money. Because everything you have now, you belong to God. The money belongs to God. Everything belongs to God. And you go to give God's money, your possession, to an idol. You deny him. It says, if we deny him, he also will deny us. You know, some those people that do not their Bible right side up, they say, once you come to Christ, whatever you do does not matter. If you go back to join gang, it does not matter. If you go back stealing, it doesn't matter. If you go back pilfering, it doesn't matter. If you go on in fornication, adultery, it doesn't matter. They are liars. Here it says, hey, we deny him. He also will deny us. It's the conditional promise of God that now as we come to the Lord, as we believe in the Lord, a new life has come. And the grace of God is available. And we can go on following the Lord. You'll keep on following the Lord in Jesus' name. We're looking at First John chapter 3, and I'm reading from verse 20. First John Chapter two, chapter three, verse twenty. For if look at that, if the condition, if our hearts condemn us, God is greater than our hearts, 
and he knoweth all things. We shouldn't be going about doing things that bring guilt, that bring condemnation. We should live in newness of life. He that follows after Christ will not walk in darkness. Look at verse 21. In verse 21, beloved, if that's the condition, that's the condition, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence toward God. I pray you'll have confidence towards the Lord in Jesus' name. Because you've removed your hand from evil. You remove your eyes from seeing evil. You remove your ears from enjoying taking pleasure in evil things. So remove every part of your body from doing evil, participating in evil. It says, if our heart condemn us not, then we have confidence toward God. And in verse 22, verse 22, and whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. So we learn that there's conditional promise, that the promises of God are, you know, to be, to be obeyed and to be accepted and to walk and fulfill the terms and the conditions of the covenant, of the promise the, of God Almighty and the Lord will bless your life all the way from now until the end in Jesus' name. And then those who are just coming today, you know you are coming in uh, into something good. You are coming to the salvation of the Lord. If you leave darkness, if you depart from your sin, if you repent of your sin, if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, that condition is there. If, and it is that if that brings you out of sin and brings you to the Savior and you have the salvation of the Lord in your life. We're coming to point number two. In point number two, we're looking at the conquering power of the glorious over our afflictions. Over our afflictions. All, you, all your afflictions, the Lord will take away. Okay, all my afflictions, the Lord will take away. By the glory of his conquering power, he will take everything away in Jesus' name. Uh, look at the word of God. In the word of God, it tells us very clearly in Isaiah chapter 63. And I'm reading from verse 1. Isaiah chapter 63 verse 1. Who is this that cometh from Edom? with dyed garments from Bosra. This that is glorious in his apparel. You can tell he's talking about our Savior, the captain of our salvation. He's talking about our Redeemer. He's talking about our healer. And he says this that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. And now he introduces himself I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. It's the Lord, and he says, he speaks in righteousness. And because he's righteous, whatever he says, it will come to pass. He doesn't lie. He doesn't defeat or deceive us. He is the truth. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And if the Son the personification of the truth. The truth come from heaven. If the Son shall make you free, you'll be free indeed. Free. Completely free. Entirely free. Free in your mind. Free in your soul. Free in your spirit. Free in your body. Free from sin. Free from sickness. Free from satanic attack. Where are you? You're free. I said you're free because he is mighty to save. Mighty to save and mighty to heal. Look at chapter 38 of Isaiah. We're reading from verse 1. Isaiah chapter 38 and we're reading from verse 1. It says, In those days was Ezekiah sick unto death. 
seek and was at the very brink of the grave. Seek and any day he will pack up and then it's gone. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came unto him and said unto him, Thus says the Lord, Isaiah said, I have a heavy message to you from God. You know me. I said, I would have said, I prophesied that the Emmanuel will come. That's me. I prophesied his son shall be given while the child is born. I said that and I prophesied this is what will happen. And now I come to you. God sent me to you. And God said, Set your house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. What if somebody wrote a letter to you? And when they write uh, that letter, they say, finished, life finished. Everything you want to do on earth, everything finished. And he said, I am a prophet. And it's no dream. And this is life. And um, he says, so you will die after you come to the crusade. After you have the promises of God, then maybe somebody there will be shaking and they'll be going out. It's looking for a prayer house somewhere. It's looking for something somewhere. It's looking for another prophet that will reverse that. What do you need that for? Why don't you go to the Lord? If you have the Lord, you have life. If you have Jesus, you have life. Death, premature death, canceled in your life in Jesus' name. Hey, look at verse 2, verse 2 here, and Ezekiah turned his face toward the wall and prayed unto the Lord. You know, a prophet might say, let us read your spring. I said it, you will die. He might say, there's no use calling upon the Lord. I told you the Lord sent me, you will die. Are you ready to die? Then why don't you leave them alone, those prayer houses and those people rubbing oil on your stomach and rubbing oil on your face and passing and taking you to the side of the river they want to wash you. Why don't you just leave them alone and face our God? Our God will answer you. Ask, it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and shall be opened to you, because everyone that asketh receiveth. He that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh, the door of promise, power, and the door of healing will be opened to you in Jesus' name. Uh, you know, many people, uh, sometimes we even pray, 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 and pray, and we don't do what we, uh, what we need to do. I was in Ghana many, many years ago now, when we were starting the church deeper life there, and I finished, um, you know, I had to say that then in the morning teachings were at, you know, the believers came together then I'll teach them the way of the Lord. After one of the morning sessions, I can Heaven, we want to thank you tonight. Thank you, Father, for this special meeting. Thank you, thank you for this holy gathering, this holy convocation. Thank you for the privilege you have given to us to gather before you once again. Thank you for the way you have constantly been encouraging our hearts. To move on, despite all the challenging situation all around us, God, we are here tonight. We are not here because we want to look at any man. We are not here because we want to concentrate on a particular individual. We are here because we want to see Jesus. We are here because we want to behold your glory. We are here because we want to renew our strength. Ahead of us. Father, we are praying that tonight, in the life of each and every one of us tonight, in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, we hand over this prayer meeting tonight in to your heavy care. Lord, we don't even know how to pray as we ought. We are depending upon the spirit of the living God. The Bible says only men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. We are praying, O oh God, that the Holy Spirit of God 
we inspire our praying and every prayer request, oh God, will be according to the plan, and I mean, according to your plan, according to your purpose, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Father, tonight. In Thank Jesus' you, mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Brethren, tonight, we want to pray. But before we launch out into the deep, it is appropriate for us to say to thank the Lord for all that God of heaven has been doing for us. As we cast our mind back from January to this time, January came and gone. Mm. February came and it has gone. March came and it has gone. April, May, and this is June, the sixth month of the year. We have every reason why we need to appreciate God. Uh, just last week, one of my students in SS1 died in a ghastly mm. motor accident. Mm. And um, she was just about 14 years. Mm. And uh, the father, the mother, they are politicians. Mm. And they want to go for this inauguration. And the, girl, the, the children in question, they were to join the elder sister that also finished from my school. Actually, mm. Those children, they were well groomed in all this uh, musical band and all that. So they want to go and play mm. at the concerts. Mm. And while they were traveling, mm. the, the vehicle that the father was in and that he drove, some assaulted. Jesus. And then, mm. it was only this particular girl that died. The Jesus. father, the mother sustained minor injury. The younger brother also sustained minor injury. In short, she was the only one that died in that accident. Now, why am I saying all of these things? It's not because we are better than those people. At it's all. by the mercy of God that we are still alive. Yes, Lord. I traveled to Lagos. I was in Lagos just briefly, just about uh, a week plus now, a week ago now. And uh, I had the opportunity of meeting our pastor, Pastor Peter, briefly. And uh, I went there for a purpose anyway. And then we were able to discuss one or two things. But, you know, in the midst of that, I saw the hand of God. I traveled in the night when I was going. When I was coming back, I traveled in the night so that mm -hmm. I could meet up with my, work, my workplace. And uh, even when the driver was driving roughly when, I, when we were coming back, People were scared. I was even fast at I knew that I have handed over everything into God's hand. That God should just take charge. But what I'm trying to bring out, for us to be alive at this time, recognize the hand of God in your life. Recognize the goodness of God in your family. Recognize that God is the one that has been preserving our lives. First Peter chapter 1 tells us, he said, we are kept by the power of God. We are being kept by the power of God when we are sleeping in the night, when we are waking up, when we are on the road, when we are moving from one place to another. It's God that is constantly keeping us. In fact, when I was in that Lagos there, right in the front of the house of the brother where I stay, Thank God, Rapita came to meet us at a particular point in time. There, a a keke, a Mara, a Mara, a three Prisako, some assaulted. I was even inside. I was forced to come out at that point in time, and uh, you know, thank God that no life was lost at that point in time, but it was very severe. But what am I trying to say? God has been so good to us. We want to spend a few minutes. Father, thank you once Lord, again. Thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. 
We think of the cross, you are being so good. I mean, all our family, our respective oh, family Lord. members, let's oh, open our mouth to give all the glory yeah. unto God. Open your mouth and begin to Let's appreciate, appreciate God. God. The one who said, Father, thank you. Many of us have traveled, have missed several journeys. We want to say, God, thank you. Why it not because of the help of God that we have been at this time? Why not because of the hour of the of the protection of God? What will have happened to many of us? Giving all the praises, brethren. Let's thank God once again because of all His numerous and uncountable blessings. God is good. I'm telling you, God is precious. God is mighty. God is. Open your mouth and bless the name of the Lord. Please, if you are, uh, if you mute your, please try to unmute yourself so that we can hear one another. Let's give all the glory unto God. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Amen. We give you all the glory. Oh yes. We give you all. We give you all the glory. We give you all. Oh no. We give you all the glory. We give you all. We give you all the glory. We give you all. Jesus, we give you all. Sing that song that we give. We give you all. We give you all the glory. We give you all, oh, no. we give you all the glory, 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 we give you all the glory. Our Father, who art in heaven, Amen. Our Father, our Father, who art in heaven, Amen. 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 We want to open our mouth once again to appreciate God on behalf of all our pastors, all our sisters, all our brothers on this platform. How the grace of God have been and they have been helping us. You know, I had I just had the news that one of our pastors. God, that God delivered him just yesterday. The keke that he boarded, maybe it was going somewhere. The keke some assaulted. Oh, and to God be the glory, God did not allow us to cry or to weep over anyone. Hallelujah. To say, Father, thank you. Please take your Father, mouth and make me you appreciate God. The Lord we will rest with you. Father, Lord, we thank you, you for your faithfulness. Satan has not got you. We give up our Lord has got The power of darkness has not got you. The agent of darkness has not got you. Jesus Christ is the head of the Father. It triumphs over the principality and power. And it made us sure of them openly. Triumphs in over the enemy. Father, we will not become fatherless. We are not asking Father, thank you once again. Oh Lord, Father, our beloved Pastor, Pastor Yomi, God did not allow the enemy to rejoice over him. We want to say, God, thank you very much. Oh, God of heaven, we are grateful. In the name of Jesus. God of heaven, we thank you. We did not allow untimely death in our midst. We did not allow premature death in order to come close to any one of us. Father, we are grateful to you, O God, for all our pastors on this platform, O God. Thank you for all our brothers, all our sisters. Thank you for every family represented, O God. Almighty God, we have every God to see thank you. You are worthy of our praises, O God. You are worthy of our praises, O God. You are worthy of our praises, O God. 
Father, we say thank you. Blessed be your name, O God. Thank you, O God. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Amen. Amen. As we cast our mind back once again, we look at what God has done for us in our GCK, the monthly GCK. We celebrated the second year anniversary of that GCK. For those of us that were listening, that listened to all the testimony, you will discover that right from the, from the day one, it was testimony galore. Look at that lady that was bound by, uh, by the spirit of tobacco. I think for 34 years, if I'm not mistaken, or, or so, is it 14 years or 34 years? And she, each time she tried to make an attempt to break away from this spirit of tobacco, it was quite difficult from, uh, for her, not until when she came for GCK. Mm. And when she came for GCK, she listened to the word of God. Altar call was made by the grace of God. She raised up her hand. The man mm. of God prayed. And that's how God delivered her. And she was mm. liberated from that yoke of, of, of tobacco for 34 years. The Lord set her free. Look at another mm. person that had a testimony. That person said that... An evil personality, you know, uh, she had a, an affair with an evil personality. When she had an affair with this evil personality, but in the daytime, she started bleeding. She bled from September last year all through to November. And then mm. somebody invited her for this GCK. Why? In the, in the location where she was, when, during the altar call, the pastor gave altar call and she raised up her hand. And eventually, by the grace of God, had mercy upon her. And when pastor was praying, God intervened. And do you know when she went back home, she said that something like a snake came out of a our, our, our private patch. God is gracious. How many testimonies are we going to count? Look at those couple that, that came. They have been waiting upon the Lord for, for 14 years. No issue, no child. And when God answered them, in fact, it was twins. And then another one again, testimony upon testimony. We want to thank God once again. For what God has used this, you know, GCK to do, the Lord has used it to liberate so many people, those who have been bound by the chain of the devil, those who have, who have been lost in sin, those who have been, you know, who have gone astray. God restore them back once again. We want to give all the glory back to God. Please open your mouth and appreciate God. And say, thank you once again for what you have done. You have been so good. Let's Father, begin to so open good. our mouth and appreciate God tonight. Let's go from GCK. Yes, oh God, I want to hear us pray, brethren. Open your mouth. Even though we are few, open your mouth and honor God and say, Father, thank you once again, oh Lord, because of what you are using your servant to do in our generation. Oh, oh God, God, we are grateful unto you. Oh Lord, we appreciate you because of the demonstration of your mighty power. Oh Lord, we give you all the glory. Oh Lord, we give you all the adoration. Oh Lord, we give you all the honor. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Thank for the greatest testimony. Thank for that young lady. We want to pray tonight. But before we pray, I want us to read a particular passage in the Bible. Jeremiah. If you have a Bible, please go along with me. I want to read from the book of Jeremiah chapter 2. Jeremiah chapter 2. And I want to read verse 11. Jeremiah chapter 2. I want to read verse 11. Where God said in verse 11, Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 11. And I will move down to verse 13. He said, as a nation change their gods which are yet no gods, but my people have changed their glory for that mm. which does not profit. They mm. change their glory for that which does not profit. Mm -hmm. In other words, he's telling us about the state of the people of Israel at that time. Many of them, they have gone astray. No mm. wonder we had the lamentation of Jeremiah. Jeremiah was always weeping because of the state of the people. Many, both men and women, all the princes, the princesses in the land, the kings, everybody, they have gone astray, even down to their prophet. 
many of them have gone astray. They are no longer serving God. They are no longer with God any longer. And that is why God said, he said, but my people have changed their glory for that which does not profit. Look at verse 13. He said, for my people have committed two evils. They are forsaking me. They are forsaking God, the almighty God, our deliverer. The almighty God, our savior. The almighty God, the one that has the power to transform lives. They are forsaking God, the God of righteousness. They are forsaking God, the God of holiness. They are forsaking God, the God of power. They are forsaking God, the one that has solution to every man's problem. He said they are forsaking me. He said they are forsaking me, the fountain of the living water. God is the fountain of the living water. He said, and they have healed them out cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. I want to tell you, the state of the church now is something that gives us, that gives us concern. I want to tell you that many of our people, many, the spirit of the last day is, inf is inf influencing them, influencing their character, influencing their behavior, influencing their actions. We want to ask God tonight and say, God, God, on behalf of the church of God, on behalf of the life member, on behalf of all our brothers, all our sisters, of course, many people will come and sit down every Sunday, every Monday, every Thursday. Do you know the state of the heart of many? Many are in the state of backsliding. Many are struggling in their spiritual life. Many oh, Lord, don't have any contact so with God again. In I fact, know. many have thrown away the Bible. Many are even, <laughs> they don't have any, ever they don't even recognize them again. In fact, we can even say that maybe their name has been deleted from the book of life. We want to pray tonight. We want to cry to God and say, King of glory. Oh Lord, have mercy upon the church, upon your church. Christ is coming back again. He's not coming for the church. He's coming for a glorious church. Church without blemish. Church that is that is still ready for the coming of God. One that is holy. We want to pray and say, God, oh Lord, have mercy once again upon the church. That we open our mouth and begin to call upon the Lord tonight. Brethren, is that for us to pray? On behalf of the church, look at the condition of our members, look at the condition of our youth, look at the condition of our children, look at the condition of the adult brothers and sisters. We want to cry to God and say, God of heaven, oh Lord, once again bring your church back, oh God, to our first destiny. Let there be a restoration, let there be a restoration, oh God. Every spirit of backsliding in the life of the men and women, oh God, in the life of the young and the old, Almighty God, once again, oh God, liberate your people once again by your mighty power and restore back your heart once again, oh God, to the first instant, oh God, to our first love. Open your mouth and begin to pray to God. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. Let's ask God and say, God, oh, Lord, 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 clean up the church once again. Oh, Lord, watch your once again. Oh, Lord, all the filthiness of the flesh, all the filthiness of the spirit, all those evil things, oh, God, that has come into the church, we want to ask God and say, God, cleanse the church once again by almighty power. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, open your mouth and begin to call upon the name of the Lord tonight. Let's ask God for restoration. Let's open our mouth and begin to pray. Open your mouth up. I'm not hearing us pray, brethren. Let's call upon the Lord. 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 Let's we want to pray, brethren. We want to call upon the name of the Lord, brethren. Because there is need for it, for us to really pray for the church. The church of this generation needs a revival. Urgent revival. As we look at the, the condition of the world, and we look at the state of the church, we begin to ask ourselves a question. Is this the kind of church that Christ is coming for? You know, I was in Lagos just about a week ago. Sincerely speaking, my wife had been complaining. She had been complaining that even the place, the district where she's supposed to attend, by 6 o'clock, the church is still under lock. 6.30, you have to start waiting and waiting 
Monday Bible study, Thursday Bible service. What is going on? What is going on? It's as as if, it's as if things are falling apart. And sincerely speaking, the place where I stayed on Sunday morning, we went to the church. Do you know, as at 8 o'clock, members of the church are not yet in the church. I think I can count how many of us were in the church at that time. Only about three or four of us. In that, in that particular location, where we were, and I was surprised, I began to ask myself, is this, a, is this a deeper life church that Christ is coming for or another church? So many questions were going on in my mind. We want to cry to God, brethren. And the same thing is applicable. You know, that very particular time, I went for an interview there. And as I was coming back, I, was, I, I saw one particular uh, church, deeper life church. It should be a group anyway. And while I was coming, do you know that uh, global workers conference that's supposed to take place on that Saturday before preceding the GCK? I, as I was on the bike, and the bike man was trying to maneuver. I was using my eyes to count how many brethren were inside the church, how many workers. Do you know that in that particular location, it's so pathetic that I could only count about five people in that place. And I, I was asking myself a question. Does it mean that this particular group, that is no, there are no workers there, that is to tell you the truth of the church. We want to pray. God, visit this church again. Visit our church again. Revive us again. Obviously, yeah. brother, we have Let's open our mouth and begin to call upon the Lord that God will visit us. So many reasons why God is not visiting his people. Because many people are forsaking the fountain of the living water. We want to ask God and say, God, revive your church once again, oh God, and restore us back to our first estate. Let's open our mouth and begin to call upon the Lord tonight. Let's open our mouth and call upon the Lord. Let's ask God and say, Lord. God, we lift our hands upon you. We need that revival. Revival in the church of the living God, looking at the condition of the church. Looking at the state of the church, we want to pray to God. Every spirit of you on the feet of the last day that is trying to infiltrate into the life of many brethren, into the life of the brothers and sisters, we want to ask God and say, God of heaven, oh God, Lord, that spirit of the last day, the characters of the last day, the attitude of the last day. Oh God of heaven, this night, let everything be rooted out of our lives, oh God. Open your mouth and begin to pray to God tonight. Let's call upon the Lord and say, God of heaven, oh God, root it out, out of our life, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, let's open our mouth and begin to pray. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. We want to pray, brethren. How will it be? Some of us here on this platform, we have been serving God now, not more than 20 years, more than 25 years, 30 years. And is it at this dying minute that we'll now say we want to go back? Is it at this dying minute we'll now begin to say, well, we cannot serve God again. We cannot please God again. We cannot work, work with God again. The Bible says, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 5, he said, he talked about, uh, about Enoch, that before his translation, he said he had this testimony that he pleased God. We want to pray, oh God, and say, Lord, God, make my life to please you. Make my life to be pleasant in your oh, sight. Lord, and, bless you, Lord. and begin to call upon the name of the Lord. He not served God. He walked with God for 300 years. There was no sin in his life. There was no unrighteousness in his life. There was no holiness in his life. He served God all through his life. And God was pleased with his life. In fact, God had to rapture him home. Let's open our mouth and say, God of heaven, oh Lord, help me. That by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ, our life will be pleasing unto God. Open your mouth and begin to pray to God tonight. This is a time for us once again to, re to rededicate our life and reconsecrate our life back unto God and say, God, cleanse us once again. Purge our life by the blood of Jesus Christ cleanse us once again. Oh Lord, help us once again by spirit and power. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, open your mouth and begin to call upon the name of the Lord. Let's ask God, let's call upon the name of the Lord. Let's ask God and say, God, 
Oh Lord, clean up our life once again. Anything that is in our life that will not allow the glory of God to radiate upon us. Oh Lord, take it away, my Father, once again tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. We want to pray, brethren. We want to tell the Lord that God will visit his church again. That God will visit his church. He will visit this church with a, with a greater power, supreme power, supernatural power, power that will elevate the church and will make us to be proactive, make us to be up and doing once again, fervency in our spirit, serving the Lord. We want to pray and say, God, oh Lord, release your power once again upon your church. Shall we open our mouth and begin to pray? Let's open our mouth and begin to call upon the Lord, brethren. Are we going to allow the gate of hell to prevail against the church? Never. Open your mouth and pray. Appropriate the promise of God. Upon this rock I build my church and the gate of hell, the great of powers of darkness, the gate of the forces of hell, they will not prevail against the church. Why don't you open your mouth and begin to call upon the Lord and say, God of heaven, oh Lord, don't allow the gate of hell to prevail upon the church. Don't allow the gate of darkness to prevail upon our churches, oh God. Don't allow the gate of hell to prevail. Open your mouth and begin to pray tonight. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. Open your mouth and begin to ask God and say, God, help me once again, O oh King of glory, O oh God. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Amen. 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 We want to lift up all our pastors on this platform into the hand of God. And we are going to begin to pray. Do you know the enemy is trying to assault some of our brethren, some of our pastors? And some of our sisters, look at the case we just had. One of our pastors had an accident. And thank God for the mercy of God. Thank God for the protection of God. Thank God for the preservation of the law. Thank God for the hand of God that preserved our, our brother and our pastor. Oh, we want to ask God. We want to pray. We want to pray for the family of Pastor Yomi. We want to ask God every determinate counsel of the devil against that family. Against the other time, he shared testimony with us. He said the devil attacked the wife, and what that was, you know, loss of blood and all that. The wife fainted as if she was going to die, and that is the enemy's attack. We want to pray and say, God, every harassment of the devil against that family, every attack of the enemy against our pastor, Pastor Yomi, and his family, the Almighty God will go forth now and begin to grind all the activities of the devil into powder. Open your mouth and begin to pray now. Open your mouth and begin to call upon the Lord. Every activity of the devil, open your mouth and begin to pray and say, God, oh Lord, the, the Lord will not allow the enemy to succeed in that family. Open your mouth and call upon the Lord. Let God arise in the greatness of his power and begin to silence the activity of Satan, all the activities of the powers of darkness, all the gates of hell, militating against him, militating against his wife, against the children. We want to ask God and say, God, Lord, begin to arise and begin to silence every opposition of the devil. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, open your mouth and begin to pray tonight. We give you glory, open Lord. We give you upon the Lord and say, God, oh Lord, our eyes upon you, God. Satan will not rejoice over us. Demons will not rejoice over our family. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, in Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. We want to pray for him once again. All the injury that he must have sustained in the course of that accident, the hand of God. The balm of Gilead will be applied upon every part of his body. In fact, this very moment, he will be to receive the supernatural visitation of heaven, even upon his body, from the crown of his head down to the sole of his feet. Shall we open our mouth and begin to pray for him now and say, God, visit your servant, O God. Oh Lord, visit your servant tonight, O God. Supernatural visitation upon his body, upon his life upon his soul, upon his spirit, upon his every part of him, O God, to begin to receive strength now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, almighty God, I'm asking my father once again, O God, 
We lift up your servant, O oh God, Pastor Yomi, to your hand, O oh God. Lord God of heaven, everywhere where there are bruises, O oh God, let the supernatural hand of God begin to touch him now. Let the supernatural hand of God begin to touch him now. Let the supernatural hand of God begin to touch him now. Let the supernatural hand of God begin to touch him now. Let the supernatural hand of God begin to touch him now. Let the supernatural hand of God begin to touch him now. Let the supernatural hand of God begin to touch him now. Amen. We want to pray for some of our pastors that Satan and all his allied forces is fighting against them, fighting against their spiritual life. If you look at the way things are going, today you'll see them on the platform, tomorrow you'll not see them. Because mm. many of our pastors are battling with so many things. We want to pray and tell the Lord and say, God, arise tonight. Arise on behalf of all your servants, oh God. All our pastors, all our sisters on this platform, Satan, the devil, have been fighting against them. Let God arise and begin to give them the victory. And begin to give us the victory. Open your mouth and begin to pray right now. Open your mouth and call upon the name of the Lord. Oh God, arise and begin to give us our pastors. As many, them, you have the life, to as many of them have lost their spiritual life, as many of them have lost their prayer life, as many of them have lost even the, the, you know, the excitement they are in the so things good. of God. Let the Holy Ghost so begin to lift them up again. Let the Holy Ghost begin to raise them up again. Let the power of God begin to work upon their soul, upon their mind, upon their spirit, upon their life tonight. Almighty God, I'm asking my Father God, we lift up all our pastors on this platform. Oh God, that the enemy have been attacking them left and right to God. Oh God of heaven, my Father, once again, begin to resuscitate their spiritual life. Begin to revive them once again, oh God. A new strength, a new power. Let it come once again into their lives, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the mighty hand of God begin to work mightily upon their soul, upon their spirit, upon their mind, upon their thought, upon their life tonight to God. Mighty God begin to operate once again upon them. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Holy Ghost begin to strengthen them. Holy Ghost begin to energize everyone, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we are free. Amen. Amen. We want to pray once again, brethren. If you look at the attendance on this platform, it has not been that encouraging. Thank God for yesterday's prayer meeting. It was a wonderful one. And we thank God for our pastor, uh, brother that led us in the prayer. God used him so mightily. And I pray that the grace of God and the anointing of God will not diminish in his life. We still want to pray once again. We want to tell the Lord. We want to pray for reinforcement. You know, when we have the army, the soldiers, when they are battling, and it appears as if they are losing ground, what do they used to do? They go back again for reinforcement. That's why tonight we want to go back again and say, Father, once again, we have come, O oh God. Reinforce us, O oh God of heaven. For the remaining part of the year, we need reinforcement. O oh God, begin to reinforce every one of us. Every one of your servants, all our pastors, all our sisters, everyone on this platform. Let God begin to reinforce us once again with the armor of Christ, the armor of God, the whole armor of God. Open your mouth and begin to pray right now. You pray, my brother, open your mouth and begin to pray. This is not the time for super super prayer. This is the time for us to really pray. Open your mouth and say, God of heaven, oh God, I need a supernatural reinforcement in my spirit, in my soul, in my heart, in my life. Oh God, begin to reinforce us again. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, let the Holy Ghost begin to quicken us up again. Let the Holy Ghost begin to us up again. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, open your mouth and begin to this Lord. Oh Lord, we need a reinforcement. Heavenly Father, once again, begin to reinforce us, oh God, from the crown of our head down to the sole of our feet, oh God. Oh, Lord, strengthen us in our inner man. Let our inner man be energized and be strengthened once again. In the mighty name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. We want to pray tonight.
The Bible says, for we wrestle not against the flesh and the blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in our places. We want to ask God tonight, all the forces of darkness that are fighting against our individual family, all the forces of darkness fighting against our brothers, fighting against our sisters, fighting against the ministers on this platform. We want to pray tonight. Let God arise and begin to crumble all the empire, all those satanic empire. Let them begin to collapse by fire. Even tonight, open your mouth and begin to pray tonight. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. Every word. Fire. Open your mouth and say, God, I recognize that this flesh and blood, but the good of the fire and the power, you the rulers of darkness, even tonight, in the name of Jesus Christ, open your mouth against any member of this platform. Father, we pray that your mighty power will cut them, our family members, that they're not at all, and they're there because of all the people that are scattered the world. Against our children, against our wives, against our own one. Do you want to come to the world of the world of the enemy? Arise and begin to get every tongue of the devil. He that mighty name of Jesus Christ. Open your mouth and begin to pray tonight. He that mighty name of Jesus. Pray. Open your mouth and call upon the name of God and say, God, begin to arise, O God, and begin to subdue every kingdom of darkness, O God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, in Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. We want to pray for one of our youths. She gave a request, and she said that while she slept, she had a nightmare, a bad dream, horrible dream, that she was, somebody shook her hand. And not too long after that, she started bleeding. Mm. And uh, she couldn't understand that she couldn't even get herself after that when she woke up. And we want to pray. All the thing, all the plantation of the devil in our body. Because my Bible tells me, Matthew chapter 15, verse 13, he said, Every plant which my heavenly father has not planted shall be rooted up. We want to pray for that sister. Whatever thing the enemy planted in our body, whatever any kind of manipulation of the devil and the maneuvering of Satan against our life. Wanting to ruin our destiny, wanting to, to, to ruin our life. We want to pray that the fire from heaven begin to scatter and begin to demolish all the works of the devil. Shall we open our mouth and begin to pray for that individual? Let's pray all for that you now. Open your mouth and call upon the This is anointing, anointing of all our pastor. Let it begin to break on the youth now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Open your mouth and begin to pray to God and say, God, oh God, my father, my father was taking the Lord. Oh God, of God, that the Philippi and your God, we will the power of the enemy to God, our youth to go. They will be allowed against us so we condemn the attack of the enemy now to be dismantled by fire in the name of Jesus Christ. All the oppression of the power of the enemy in our life will be dismantled by the power of the enemy. We want to pray for our beloved pastor, Pastor Matthew, who is the arrowhead of this online prayer meeting. By the grace of God, God used him to establish this prayer meeting. And God has been using him so mightily in the funding and everything. But do you know, it has, uh, one way or the other, it seems things have not been that rosy. But we want to pray. You know, when good things are happening, the devil doesn't want that good thing to continue. He wants to do everything to discontinue that thing. But we are going to pray for him. We are going to ask God and say, God, spiritually, God will empower him. 
Financially, mm. God will empower him. Materially, Amen. God will empower him. And all around, all together, God begin to empower him. Open your mouth and begin to pray for him. Let's pray for that supernatural oh, empowerment. Oh, all God. around empowerment. All around empowerment. Yeah, it's the mighty God. name of God. Jesus Christ. Let's the open our and God and begin to call upon the name of the Lord. Holy Father, once again, O God, God. We, we lift up your spirit and your power before you, God, who is the arrowhead of this program of this online committee. Oh, see God and ask Him, my Father. Spiritually, oh God, empower Him. Spiritually, oh God, strengthen Him. Physically, oh God, materially, financially. Speaking to the Holy Almighty God, I'm asking my Father who's again, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Almighty God, I'm asking my Father. God, you will stand by him, O oh God, in the day, in the night, O oh God. Stand by him, O oh God. Right of God, I'm asking my Father who's again, O oh Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Amen. We want to pray for the children. We want to ask God that every influence of the devil in the life of these children, you know, one thing is that when these children, they start growing and they are growing in the nurture, in the admonition of the law, Satan, we want to come in and ah, let me find a means of how I can find my route. I can find my way. I can find an evil into the life of those children. We want to pray away for the law. Every andrighting of the devil, written against his children, the almighty God begins to wipe everything off by the blood of Jesus Christ. Shall we open our mouth and begin to pray for him? Let's Father, lift up the me and the and the sister into the hand of God. Our children will follow you and kill me and angel we pray. In the life of this moment, to to our them pastor, higher and higher. God, God, in the, in Lord, the name of Jesus, Jesus. begin to neutralize and begin to cancel everything tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, open your mouth and begin to call upon the name of the Lord. Let God arise tonight and begin to fight on behalf of this children. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord will help them to be stable and to be steady in the will of God, in the way of the Lord, in the way of righteousness and holiness. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, in Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. We want to lift up his wife into the hand of the Lord. We want to pray for her. That <sighs> God, anywhere she may be, Whatever thing that she is doing, you know, when the wife is not cooperating with the husband and things are not moving on, it, it can cause a division in the home. We want to pray that all the activities, all the manipulation of the devil. You know, let me tell you something about, about, about Simon Peter. He said, Jesus Christ told him, he said, Simon, Simon, Satan has desired to have you and to sift you like witch. But I pray for you. Jesus prayed for me, pray for Peter. He said, I pray for you that I may fail not. And we want to pray for that woman. We want to ask God and say, God, any way she may be, Holy Ghost begin to minister to her. Holy Ghost begin to arrest her out unto restoration. The power of God will not allow her to have any rest of mind until she's fully established in the Lord. We I must make her you bring in, in every restore part of the family in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our time is fast spent. Please, I quickly request our pastor, Pastor Peter, Pastor Peter Bose, please help us round up this session before Pastor Matthew will come up. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Our Father and our God, we worship and bless your name. We thank you because you are God and there's none else beside you. 
We thank you for your hands upon us. We thank you for your faithfulness towards us. Oh Lord, we now we worship you. Father God, now we bless you. We say glory, honor, adoration, thanks, give be unto your name, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, I thank you for yet another privilege to come together this night to pray. We thank you because we did not gather to mourn any of us. We exalt your name for the testimony we are hearing from Pastor Yomi, who said he wanted to rest tonight because of tomorrow morning. Oh Lord God, now we exalt you because the devil has planned something worse than what we had, being in a Kekemarua and a vehicle in top speed, eating them and the Kekemarua somersaulting. In fact, he said the person sitting by his side was rushed to the hospital. He did not even know where he was. But your but our pastor just had minor scratches in his body. Father, we just worship you because it is you. He said he keep asking, how did how is it that he see the way he saw himself? I said, ah, why are you asking that question? That is the power of God. God has 